Good evening. This is the October 6, 2015 uh, Raleigh Board of Water Commissioners meeting uh, here in Raleigh. Uh, Intendant's full board, uh, superintendent, and uh, first order of business is to accept and approve minutes of September 18th. Uh, I don't think they're done, so we're going to table that. And approve minutes of September 29th, 2015. We don't have them done either, so we're going to uh, table that to the next meeting. Uh, you had some? Yeah, just a question, Tim. I guess I said, could just discuss a bit. Um, looking at everything we've got to deal with tonight, and I think there'll be a lot of discussion about the investigation items, say, on 1 through 10. Would it be possible to flip new business first, or do old business, then new business, and then spend the balance of time we have on the investigation items? Well, it's going to lead into that, so we need to talk about the old business. It's not going to take too long. The investigation stuff? No, the uh, old business. Right, so do old business, then new business, and then do the investigation stuff. You just want put new business before the investigation oh, okay. stuff. All right. I just think that these are critical items. I don't want to have us go run too late. Okay. Okay. All right. I'd just like to say, let's keep this meat civilized. All right. Um, any other comments, John? No, it's just a, we're going to have to vote to do that, do we? Okay, so we'll uh, signing of POs, payroll, bill warrants, and contracting services. Do you have any PO, POs assigned today? I had a purchase order to the window for a laptop computer, and it just appeared. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a request for the Well, I was going I was going to bring that up, and uh, so it's not it's a moot point right now, so. Any other POs? Just the only thing I have for the board to sign tonight is the um, water committee. Okay, so we've signed that. That's okay. Um, you missed the citizen's corner. No, as well, 605 is, hasn't arrived yet. I could open it up early. Oh, okay. Or I could take care of some of these old business items. Oh, okay. Uh, the emergency contract of solicitation documentation on 825. We asked for some of the backup on the uh, solicitation notes to get the uh, emergency um, contract for water services. Did you gather that for the board yet? I don't recall being asked to provide um, that to the board. If you give me a moment, I can get. Is that pipe? Yeah. Is that you talk about the pipe construction? Yeah, when we awarded pipe, so we had to. Uh, so you want the bid documents? Yes. I gave the doc bid documents to the board already on, yeah. the, on that. Well, we, we went, we went with, the, with the award, with the, with the well, bidders. When we went through them, we reviewed all yeah, the but bids and picked the best one. That's correct. But we didn't get the, um, we only had two bids. Yeah, it was given to five and only two replied. And the price difference was significant between Pike and I can't remember the other people. Yeah. I can go get it. It's right the well, did you contact the um, other contractors that would be on the list? or? And they weren't interested, or so. What we did was we had the bid spec for emergency and routine repairs in the water system, since we don't, you know, we're short staffed to be able to take care of that stuff right now in house. So we put that out to formal bid. Um, we actually sent the notice to bidders to um, all uh, contractors that possibly could do this. It was uh, published in the local newspaper and uh, and also on the central register, so anybody could go in and. Um, Get, get the see that we have this available. Uh, we, we only received two two bid documents back. One was from um, Arthur Piper and the other one was from Pike Construction. We had um, the bid opening. Um, we received the sale bid, so it was one more bid opening, recorded all the information, and the lowest bidder was Pike Construction. Um, I provided all of that to the water board uh, when it happened back, I think it was in August. Okay, so you didn't make any phone calls to the other contractors to see if they'd be interested, or? But that's not how it works. Yeah. We sent out a notice to bidders, uh -huh. and then we publish it in the newspaper. We, we, if we, we can't make people put in bids. Uh -huh. It's a formal bidding process. It's a formal one bidding out of five. Yeah. So we got two bids in. The board voted to award to the lowest bidder, which was Pike. Yeah. We, we, we comply with... Uh, Chapter 30 B uh, the compliance, uh, um, excuse me, the procurement laws. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'll provide whatever you're asking, but I'm not quite Well, you've sure. given us everything? Yes. Okay. Yes. I thought that there was more. I thought that there was some, but somebody was calling the, to see if that they would be interested in uh, 
bidding and stuff. We don't like place that. phone calls. That's okay. not how the, the, the bidding process works. Yeah. We sent out. We actually sent a notice to bidders, and you don't even have to do that. Yeah. But we did. So you advertised it in the. Uh, New Report Daily News, which okay. is what the town advertises for. Okay. All right. Well, I was looking for it. I thought that there was other documentation where you actually co made calls to solicit to see if they would actually provide a bid and make well, them no, aware no. that there was a, a bid uh, spec out there for them to. No. The only time bid. we place calls is if we are actually calling to get like quotes. We would make a phone, solicit a phone call okay. or solicit via email, but not with the formal bid process. No, we don't place calls. Okay. All right. So that's it. Um, that's two, one and two. Uh, so the citizens query is open now. It's a little bit late, so we'll keep the citizens query open until uh, uh, six fifteen. Okay. Uh, Mr. Snow. Bob Snow, board of selectmen. Uh, I would like to uh, you know the the laptop computer that the superintendent had. Um, I would like to know the chain of custody from the time the superintendent was legally put on leave until it appeared again. I would like to have a written statement from the board stating where the, on the chain of custody of that laptop. Okay, so what we'll do at the end of the meeting, we'll put that on for seeing if the board wants to add that to the next agenda. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Mr. White? Yes, Larry White, <coughs> Central Street. Uh, <coughs> your response dated September 30th, 2015 to my letter of September 29th, 2015 requesting inspection or a copy of the executive session of September 11th, 2015 is unacceptable. And I quote from your letter, public bodies are not required to disclose the minutes, notes, or other materials used in the executive session if the disclosure of these records may defeat the lawful purposes of the executive session. The session was unlawful as evidenced by the reading by Mr. Manning of the legal opinion of Mr. Fair, therefore the minutes have to be disclosed. Furthermore, I quote from your letter, and if at the time of the request the public body has not conducted a review of the minutes to determine whether the continued non-disclosure is warranted, the body must perform such a review of the minutes, if appropriate, no later than its next meeting or within 30 days, whichever occurs first. This meeting is the next meeting, and I demand such a review. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Open Law, General Law C.38, Section 22, Subsection F2, upon request by any person to inspect a copy of the minutes of an executive session, or any portion thereof, the body shall respond to the request within 10 days following receipt and shall release such any such minutes not covered by an exemption under subsection F. Goes on further. Mr. Moschella or Moschella was hired in the executive session. Weston and Sampson were illegally employed during this session. Both of these invalid contracts have been terminated by the recipients. Therefore, there is no need for withholding these portions of the minutes pertaining to these, and I demand that you release these portions of the minutes as well as any discussions pertaining to these. Thank you. Uh, so, I will comment that uh, I don't know why you deemed the meeting illegal, other than what you I think the interpretation. I'm Mr. still talking, Fair. Mr. White. I don't understand why you're calling it illegal. I don't think Mr. Fair called it illegal in his email. And I don't think anybody should be judging whether that meeting was legal or illegal. And for you to come in here and spread that, uh, that word illegal, it's just like uh, the selectmen spend, uh, spreading that word illegal all the time. That the, uh, the determination whether it was Ill illegal is going to be made by the Attorney General's office. And stop bringing it up if you could please, sir. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, as far as the 10-day rule, uh, the, the information is still confidential. Uh, this board needs to have a, a legal uh, represented representation to answer these kind of questions. 
and to suggest that we should be answering any of these questions without proper legal counsel is kind of ridiculous because this this is the only board in town that doesn't have a legal uh, team. The, the electric light department has a legal team, the selectmen have a legal team, and, uh, and the other boards, whenever they want you know, some legal advice, they get it right on board. We've asked for our independent legal uh, team uh, or representation only because we have an adversarial relationship with the Board of Selectmen. And uh, you know, they have been you know, coming after us you know, and not allowing us and making this board uh, dysfunctional. And we need to have some legal counsel on some of these issues. And we, I brought them up several times. I feel like I'm a broken record. I don't know why we can't have legal <coughs> representation. And uh, we have to have uh, a lot of this uh, stems from, I think, and it's been my impression just after that last few weeks, that the selectmen think that this board reports to the selectmen. And it doesn't. This board is abided by uh, section uh, 4169B. So anyways, that's my comment. Shirley Faulkner, Weldon Farm Road. I, I just wanted to ask you about the regular minutes. The last two meetings that I've attended, the minutes were not ready and the minutes were not approved and they were actually tabled and moved. Yeah. I think that some of the problem with the perception of the water department is because okay. the minutes aren't ready on time and it's very hard to follow what's really happening, legal or illegal, because I think we get sidetracked a little bit. Yeah. And so I don't know why we don't have a record, a formal record, on the record of the minutes, ready to approve, ready for us to look at, so that we can actually have a clear picture of what's happening in town and what's happening at these meetings, if you're not in attendance. I was here last week, and it's still hard for me to digest all the information that was, there was some great progress made, but there's yeah. a lot of work to do, and not having the minutes ready to go and ready to be voted on and accepted on this, now we're two weeks behind, I think that that does damage to keeping us on track and where we need to be and I think that could be somewhat of what is you know under underlying the problem with no, I, I agree with that if you name it, you know, sure, surely, surely yeah, yeah. I, so um, I, I would say that uh, um, we had a, a, a little bit of a, a bump in the road here so to speak we had uh, a superintendent that was on administrative leave for two weeks so we're trying to get just get back on our feet. So if you could give us some added time, if you if you have any questions at all about any of these meetings, they're right on the uh, the Raleigh Community Media yes, on TV. So you can just kind of follow that, and you know you can watch it you know several times just to get it. That's more accurate than the minutes. Okay. So well, so that scares me a little too because the minutes should be accurate. About oh, I, I think they should be. Right? You know, so but I I do know that where I can watch it on television, and I yeah. do like to watch on television. Yeah. But I also like to have it current, and I think as part of a board of a town, that the minutes should be ready to go. I do understand there was an administrator. Uh, leave situation. I'm glad that was cleared up at the last meeting. But that's the kind of stuff I think that if it was out in the public would actually help the, the, the water department's communication, which I think there is a communication, a little snafu between the public and the water department. And I think that the more we try to work together and get the minutes done, the better off everybody will be. Okay. Well, we'll try to put some attention on it. Mr. Martin? Yes, my name is Scott Martin. I'm with the 3 Wethersfield Street. I have a question uh, for the board. Uh, well, uh, under your uh, uh, title, investigation into department management and uh, contracting and comp time of the agenda, um, uh, I would just like to know if it's a cons general consensus of the board to do what I see looking at as department management, which your superintendent. Mm -hmm. Is it the cons general consensus of the board? to investigate your su superintendent under items one through 10, which three of them are town policy, okay? Under uh, uh, department benefits and pay, personal use of department computers, and personal use of, it says water department should be town department property, you know? Um, is this the general consensus of the board to investigate the uh, 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 department management which your manager of the department is your superintendent. Yeah. And I've been past, super, uh, past chairman of this board uh, for 12 years, okay? And, and when you have this in an open forum, okay, an investigation under uh, 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 department management, which is your superintendent, okay, uh, you, you, you may want to reconsider 
going into some of these avenues because you're dealing with employment. I don't know if you understand, or you know the protocol. From what I've watched for the last three, four months, okay, you don't know the protocol mm -hmm. of, of how to go, how to, how to go venture down these avenues, okay? And, you, and, and, and the board yeah. should be very careful for what you <clears throat> what you hold, okay? Yeah. And, and what I've seen is a Paul. Paul, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot, but, but I my concern is your agenda. And what I'd like to know, is it the consensus of this board to venture down into what you have on your agenda tonight, an investigation into department management? You, you may want to reconsider Mm -hmm. Doing this. Okay, I, I, I'm going to address that when we get to that section, okay. Mr. Martin. And uh, you know, your, your comments are well taken. You know, I uh, I'll talk about that when I get to that section. But uh, um, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Chairman, I have a brief statement here from what is like when I know you don't care for us, but <coughs> IT coordinator Karen Summer had asked the police department to look at the missing laptop last week. She asked Chair Toomey if he had it, and he denied having it. He said that Paul Brogos may have had it. Chair Toomey had the missing keys and the cell phone. However, the police contacted Mr. Brogo, who said that he did not have it, and that he saw it with Mr. Toomey and another man, Michelle. Ex excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I hate to cut you off, but this yeah. is like a legal thing. Uh, we're, we're not going to be bring, going down that path. You here as a capacity, as a selectman, bring it up to strength. If you if you want, I know. But if you want, you're welcome to put a letter together to the board, and we can look at it. For, a, for a, but you're just trying to mudsling in here. Right? I'm not going to allow that. So, uh, in fact, the, uh, the 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 citizen query citizen query is now over. So, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. All right. So the. Uh, uh, the next item on the business uh, is old business. It's uh, Chapter 4169B, Tom Bylaws, Water Department Regulations, Chapter 11, 1946, Joint Meeting Discussion on Authority. Um, this has been a uh, an issue since the uh, uh, Water Selectman uh, authorized the Water Superintendent to uh, sign purchase orders. Not, not purchase orders, but uh, sign off on the bills and payroll since back in uh, July, the end of June. So th this is all stemming to that. This is, uh, we've, you know, looked at this with, with respect to what's the authority of this board as far as, you know, progressing uh, through uh, uh, our needs to, to, to hire a legal um, consultant or whatever. Uh, we, we, we've had a lot of things and uh, I have a statement tonight I'm going to read, and uh... Could you just clarify that you're reading a statement about... I'm reading a statement about the uh, regulations we're all uh, abided by for this department. No, it's reading. So, so you're reading the bylaws? I'm going to read a statement. So, the, as a member of the Board of Water Commissioners, I have consistently raised concerns about the Water Department's operating budget, as well as the necessity and validity of the most recent rate increase in the $25 monthly surcharge on residents' monthly water bills. Given that this is clearly within my rights and duties as a Water Commissioner, I have been consistently denied the right to make an informed decision on these matters. In my opinion, certain members of the Board of Selectmen have taken it upon themselves to undermine the authority of the water, Board of Water Commissioners by manipulating the process through the use of smokescreen issues and creation of unnecessary uh, conflicts between the Board of Water Commissioners and the superintendent. It's typically divide and conquer technique. Nevertheless, my inquiries into these issues were met with hostility from members of the Board of Selectmen attending at the Water Board meeting, pressuring us to just approve the rate increases and surcharge without any factual basis, by implying that any questions to the contrary was a reflection of distrust of the superintendent. To make matters worse, my efforts to obtain such related information were, were met with hostility and allegations generated by the Board of Commissioners to the Water Superintendent, alleging that I that asking for such documentation independently was a violation of the open meeting law. 
After learning that this was untrue as a water commissioner, I had no other option to file a public records request to get information that I was automatically entitled to directly related to the duties of members of the Board of Water Commissioners. With that, I reiterate my concerns that the operating budget of the Water Department has approximately doubled from roughly $1 million to $2 million. Aside from the obvious additional costs related to the treatment plant, I am still seeking a detailed explanation as to why and how the Water Department's budget has approximately doubled in size within a span of one year. A detailed comparison, breakdown, and explanation of the things that the members of the Water, Water, Water Board should be provided with in general, especially when considering our rules and regulations the Water Board adopted. To make matters worse, aside from the budget approximately doubling by $1 million and the lack of justification for most of the recent rate increase, in addition to the $25 monthly surcharge, I became increasingly disturbed after learning that the Water Department is sitting on a $600,000 surplus. With the budget nearly doubling, I'm not entirely surprised by the surplus, but I find it, this surplus deeply concerning given the most recent rate increase on top of $25 surcharge. At this point, trusting that the cursory inf financial information I've obtained is true, I can't help but conclude that the most recent rate increase and the $25 monthly surcharge were necessary, supporting my case that neither should have been happen happened without the proper fi factual information and justification that I have been requesting all along. Not only do I feel the process as described above is unfair to the taxpayers and ratepayers, it appears to be contrary to the enabling statute, Mass General Laws 4169B, is prominently mentioned and referred to in the approved Water Department rules and regulations. When reading the requirements of Mass General Laws 4169B, even with the limited financial information I was able to obtain, I couldn't help expressing concerns with the compliance of this law, which appears to promote good management and consumer practices. However, after numerous attempts in getting an answer, the Board of Selectmen claimed the Town of Raleigh didn't adopt Mass General Laws 4169B and therefore the legal requirements of this law don't apply. In addition, the Board of Selectmen, they responded with a legal opinion acknowledging that although the Water Department rules and regulations support my position that the Town of Raleigh accepted Mass General Laws 4169B, there was no proof that the Town adopted the law and suggested that the Water Department rules and regulations should be changed. Just for the record, given the language in the text specifically referenced to Mass General Laws 4169B, I had no reason to believe that the Water Department rules and regulations related to such may be or were incorrect. If the selectmen did, they should have indicated such long ago, but instead they decided to refer the town to town council. However, and more importantly, now that we are on this very important subject, I note the many good management and consumer practices set forth in Mass General Laws 4169B, uh, which among other things safeguards residents' ratepayers from over excessive rates. For these reasons, although discouraged by the Town Council's letter indicated there was no proof that the Town of Raleigh adopted Mass General Laws 4169B, I note some additional and very pertinent information that the Council made, no mention, of this in her search for information to support the position that the Town of Raleigh did accept Mass General Laws 4169B. What I'm referring to is a water restriction bylaw located on page 92 of the Town of Raleigh's general bylaws. Unlike the Water Department rules and regulations, the Town bylaws are drafted and approved by Town Council, accepting the Town meeting, and more importantly, reviewed and approved by the Attorney General's office. In the first section of the Water Reuse Restriction Bylaw, Section 1 Authority, it clearly references the Mass General Laws 4169B. This bylaw is adopted by the town under the police powers pursuant to the Home Rule Amendment of the Massachusetts Constitution, Article LXXXIX, to protect public health and welfare, and its powers pursuant to Mass General Laws 40, Section 21, and the influence of town authority to regulate water pursuant to Mass General Laws 4169B. This bylaw also implements the town's authority under Mass General Laws 40 and 40, Section 41A, conditioned upon declaration of state 
of water supply emergency issued by the Department of Environmental Protection. I further note that this bylaw was voted on and adopted in a special town meeting of November 18, 2002, which printed and presented in this manner. Article 15, to see if the town will vote and adopt a water restriction bylaw to read as follows. Section 1, Authority. By this law, it is adopted at the town under the police powers pursuant to the Home Rule Amendment and the Massachusetts Constitution to protect health, public health and welfare and the powers pursuant to Master General Laws 40 and Section 21 and the implements the town authority to regulate water use pursuant to Master General Laws 41 and 69B. This bylaw also implements the town's authority under Master General Laws 40 and 40, Section 41A conditioned upon a declaration of state water supply emergency issued by the Department of Environmental Protection. <coughs> Moreover, I note that this bylaw was approved by the Attorney General on February 20th, 2003, as documented on page 99 of the Town of General, Town of Raleigh's General Bylaws. Although Town Council may not be aware of such, and decided to only focus on water department rules and regulations, I would argue that the water use restriction bylaw is very applicable to a supporting that the town, what the town did. In fact, accepting Mass General Laws 4169B implements the town's authority to regulate water use pursuant to section Mass General Laws 4169B. This information supports my ongoing concern regarding the applicability of Mass General Laws 4169B. Given the information outlined above regarding the applicability of Mass General Laws 41 uh, section 69B, I believe the town is not complying with the requirements of this statute. Ironically, despite the numerous and unfortunate misinformation campaigns, I have, con I have and continue to express concerns about the validity of the water rates and surcharges consistent with many of the individuals attending the Sept 20, September 29th Water Department meeting. Therefore, I urge the selectmen to further reflect on the applicability of Mass General Laws 4169B and work with the Water Board to comply with the statute of the Town of Raleigh utilized and adopt in order to establish the Water Use Restriction Bylaw written by Town Council, approved by Town Meeting, and approved by the Attorney General. In closing, is it, it, it's too bad that it has taken this long to address my concerns, which the tone of the Town Council's response dated September 24th doesn't appear to be unreasonable at all. Therefore, given the promotion, the position, Relative to the applicability of Mass General Laws 41, Section 69B, that I've summarized above, I firmly believe we need to revisit and resolve the issue as soon as possible. Not only doing so in the best interest of the public and ratepayers, I believe we all have a duty to do so, and given our oath of office in elected, as elected officials. I look forward to working toward a factual and legally sound resolution as soon as possible, and I am prepared to facilitate and contribute towards such in any applicable manner possible. Uh, Tim Toomey. Um, so I would like um, a motion to... Uh, I'd like a little clarification on some part of that that you mentioned in the beginning. You had talked about the rate increases and... The I, I, I haven't... I'm, I'm, let me finish up here, okay? Well, you I, I haven't recognized. I haven't recognized you to speak at this point. So, anyways, I would like a, a motion to accept a this as a. I have a question not. first. It's okay. An open discussion um, about the two, item. Two comments. One, the, uh, you and Stu were on the board during the whole budget process that has transpired, right. yep. um, and you're questioning. You're concerned that the budget doubled from a million to two million. Um, why now? And then secondly, weren't you also on the financial group that the Treasurer put together to redo the budget? And, and I, I see a disconnect between your participation in the process and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're and you were also on the board during the vote for that. You were reiterate here several times about the $25. You guys you guys were part of that. I came in after that, and and then on the with the regards to the rates, understanding why the rates doubled and the billing and such. I know just as I was coming on, I'm not sure if it was Tater and Howard or what the firm was that did the rate study, and you had to redo the rate study, and we had a very in-depth discussion of the budget, and I don't understand the disconnect. Okay. from what you've stated in here, and that would make it, I, I couldn't support I, I was questioning things on why the budget was so high, so I didn't vote for the budget. 
And uh, so why is it now? It's because uh, it's it's come to a, a statement where we have to uh, determine what the the uh, the issue is with res regard to uh, what the authority is here on this board. Well, okay. is it the budget or the authority? Because right. the budget, with respect to the, was it Tater and Hamilton, the water, the rate study? Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. with, with regards to the rate study, we had five different scenarios there, and we walked through all of those, and it, it, it certainly supported what the budget was. So, I don't, and, this, it, it, and at that point, we, we did support the rate study. We went through the rate study, we talked about it. Rate study is something different, and, John. The and, budget was something different. Well, no, it, it tied in exactly to the budget because it was the funding that would go to the budget. And so at that point, it made complete sense, and well, we all seem to be on board with it. Yeah. And now, right. I think it's more the issue is it's the, the budget. The disagreement with, well, it doesn't appear that way. Mm -hmm. I would question that. Excuse me, Tim, what time for this? Uh, I would question that because I don't think it's so much the budget. We, we did seem to be in accord with the rate study, and it, and it gave budget scenarios, and we, we said, okay, that makes sense. And I think what the issue is here that you're bringing up is the, the discord between um, your, the, the chairman and the selectman right now over, over the authority. So I, it, the way this is stated, I couldn't support this because it's referring to budget okay. stuff that I believe was resolved. Yeah, the, budget is, uh, the budget was uh, not approved. Uh, uh, it wasn't voted on by me. So I mean, I... Mr. Chair, okay. it, it wasn't $25. It was it $20. Mm -hmm. okay. $20, not $25. Okay. It was a $20 app, uh, fee and a month for every uh, account. Uh -huh. You're absolutely right, Mr. Martin, and I'll be the first to admit I said it at the hearing. I made a mistake, and we rolled that twenty-dollar surcharge back. Yes, yes, and at the time there was three scenarios from Taylor and Howard uh, um, as to the uh, um, as to increases of rates and whether the to put on a, a, a twenty-dollar fee per account. There was th that was one, and there was two other. Uh, two other scenarios for rate increase. And uh, um, after uh, reconsidering the $20 a month fee, the board uh, 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 voted to drop the $20 a month fee and go to the higher increase in the rates. But you still, the, 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 the budget was voted at town meeting at the 2.7. So you, the, the board voted that way to, to uh, um, to support its budget. It cannot go less than the budget, right. or else the general fund has to make up the difference. And I don't believe the general fund wants to make up the difference of the water department's budget at this time. And when the budget's presented at town meeting, you have already done your work on the budget. That's the thing I can't, so when you read that letter and, and all those words, it's so hard for me to follow because to me, that work has already been done long ago before we voted at town meeting. When we go, when we get that in the mail and we look over that budget, that's what, that's the work that was supposed to have gone in on the water department's time before town meeting. So for me, this seems a little bit after the horse is out of the barn kind of thing. Additionally, yeah. additionally, with respect to the budget, in your line here saying that you don't understand why it increased to, from one million to two million dollars, it. it you don't cite a span of time there, and looking at the budgets of the last uh, several years, uh, 800, 900, 900, million, million one, million five, the, the biggest increase was just under 500,000 per year, and that also, the budgets went from about a million to when the plan came online, they're going up to 1.5 the first year, and then 2.1, 2.4, and then 2.7 for fiscal 216, um, which seems like it'd be a reasonable increase is the, the plants, the plants come online and some things that I know at town meeting. And that's meeting. what the department meeting was, that's what we were told at town meeting when we went department by department. That's that's the, the increase that was explained to us. Right. Yeah, it, it wasn't a, just a giant jump out of the blue. It was explained to us at the, when each of the departments have to go through and explain their why they're presenting the budget the way they are, right? Um, all I can comment on is that uh, I, the budget was uh, alarmingly uh, inflated, I f figured, and I and didn't vote for the budget. So the board voted for the budget and passed it up to the finance committee or whatever. 
right? And uh, it went the before the town meeting. Manager. Yeah, and it went up before the t townspeople, and it was voted. It was uh, a, a very high budget, as far as I could. So the letter that you're reading is an opinion piece about what you think about the budget that was passed already. Is I'm that saying that I'm 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 looking at this uh, this 41. 69B, yeah. Yeah. because there's an authority thing here. Okay, so to me that seems different than what you're talking about. Well, let me finish, let me finish. Okay. So it's an authority thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, we have uh, a better grasp of authority, we can, you know, hire out uh, some, some assistance to, to help us look at these numbers. So or, if I understand what you're saying, if you understand the chain of command and the authority, then we can hire more? authority that the townspeople will be asked to pay for to clarify your position in the town? Is that, I'm just no, trying to I, figure I, out. You know, I, I, I don't really I, understand because in the beginning my, of the my goal and My goal and I, I believe this board's goal is to try to have uh, economical, safe drinking water. And, uh, and so when we get information from the department, we have to look at that and we, we, if, if we scrutinize it and we have the power to say, okay, well, we, we don't want to do that. We, we're having some issues as far as uh, being able to, uh, you know, verify some of these costs. So I, I think we need to have uh, the ability to hire out some specialized services to help us and the townspeople get a better grasp and get a better budget, more a tighter budget. Okay, so, so that makes sense to me yeah. about the letter and the way you, you keep referring to. First, in the beginning of your letter, it was... 41, 69, we did have the power, then we didn't have the power, then in the end, you realize that 2003, we did have, like it's really hard to follow what exactly the point is and why you read that long letter to me. I can't, I, I honestly, I, I'm not sure exactly whether well, it was opinion or you're speaking on It's going to be public article. record and you want, it's going to be public record and you can look at it and okay. digest it. I spent a lot of time on it. And but I'm not sure it's part of the water department's business really for what we have, to, we have so much work to do. We have so much work to do, and we, should, we, you know, we all want economical water, don't we? We never get to the water business. We never get to the water Mr. Martin? Business. Mr. Chairman, um, I think when you were reading your letter and you said that uh, last year you had $500,000 surplus in, 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 in uh, uh, retained earnings or free cash, as they call it, um, and, and I don't believe uh, you've ex explained how the $500,000 surplus be, came about. I, which in, in, I know a lot about the water department. I know, I know the budgets. I know how it runs. And I know its deficiencies, lack ofs in that, and in, in its, its lack ofs in staffing. At the time, I do believe it was the fiscal year of 14, you had uh, a staffing issue, as where is you only had two full-time employees. You did not have a full-time superintendent at that time, nor did you have the full staffing, okay? So for that year, you did not have the, uh, 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 the costs of full staffing. So a lot of that $500,000 that is surplus was in not paying it out to employees that year because you didn't have them to pay it out. You didn't pay out their wages, you didn't pay out the benefits, you didn't pay out, so a lot of that surplus is because of, of, of not being fully staffed, okay, which went into the free cash. If I remember correctly that year, we had to have to go into a special, and you had to take $300,000 out, I can't believe, I don't remember if it was that, I think it was that year, you took $300,000 out of free cash to make the budget. At a special town meeting? At a special town meeting, yes. So that because the budget that year was underfunded, mm -hmm. okay, and you have at the special, you uh, transferred, I do believe yeah. it was $300,000 into free cash to make the budget, to make the, the year end that year. And the following year is when your free cash becomes available. Now you're, you're $500,000 in surplus. That's where your surplus came in, because of you didn't have the costs that year that you would have if you were fully staffed, fully manned, and fully operational. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why you have the surplus, okay? As to the budget going up, okay? The budget, what, it was going to go up. 
it, it, okay? It was forecasted for. Right. It was mm -hmm. done at many times at town meeting, mm -hmm. which said it was supposed to go up. The board failed that time to increase rates incrementally. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to get hit so hard at one time. And because that's this board failed yeah. Yeah. to increase rates from fiscal year 013 to this date. Okay? And, and, and it's not anybody else's fault but the board's. And that's, and, and that's the board's responsibility. Not to manage the department. Okay? You have a superintendent that manages the department. The board's responsibility is to oversee. Oversee. <coughs> But and to answer your question, I heard you talk about the, the $500,000 in surplus, okay? And that's where that $500,000 surplus came, came in, okay? Uh, Mr. Chair, you've been on this board for a long time, okay? You, I would think that something of the budgeting, you were involved in, in all of this, mm -hmm. And, and, and you should be aware of it. You should know what has gone on in the past. Okay? That's your responsibility as an elected town official, all of you, mm -hmm. is to know what's gone on in the past. Yeah. I, I, Mr. Martin, I, okay? I, we're aware and, of that. But you failed, yeah. sir. You failed. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I don't think I failed. That's, that's my opinion. That's only my I, I opinion. I see uh, a free I cash. I see. With you yeah. I see time. free cash. And I, I saw see. it. Four beta. Yeah. I see free cash, and I say uh, you should know should what's be looking going on, sir. That with, with respect to maybe reducing the rates, and that's what I see, and we can do that. Any other questions? Understanding, you, you mentioned that you don't do not understand how the budget came about, but you hired Kate Howard to come in and do the rate study to understand what rates should be implemented. So after going through that whole process, how can you still not understand when the town's money was used to hire them, and we got that report back from them? How can you not understand what the budget is and what it needs to be? After going through that. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. I don't understand the budget. I identify I, yourself. Yep, Christopher Lynn, six hour head circle. Thank Raleigh. You. I, I. So the point of the letter still, it's all this time has mm -hmm. gone by and and really I don't understand why you felt the need to read the letter, first of all. And secondly, it's backwards. You really should have been asking those questions before we we saw the water department's report and and, and saw it in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. With all well, due respect. Okay. So I guess we're looking for a motion to uh, accept this uh, statement and uh, also no, schedule a uh, joint meeting. Uh, you have to have two different yeah. motions there, Tim. Okay. I can't support this document. Okay. So, Mr. Delzo? We we'll get sidetracked here between this letter and the budget. Right. Right. Yeah, here. Okay. Well done. Mr. Chairman, we can't hear what Mr. Dazzle said. I said we got sidetracked here between this letter mm -hmm. and a budget. Right. Agreed. This letter uh, is specifically designed to uh, address our meeting with uh, the town bylaws, Water Department Regulations, Chapter 11, 1946, and the controversy whether or not the Chapter 4169B is uh, applicable okay mm -hmm. so that i brought in the budget things in this letter to you know as an example of why i want this issue with uh, the regulations to be clarified so, and it needs to be clarified between this board and the select because we're still at odds at the, whether or not this uh this applies so okay. well i think we can still you know the select and have a so anyways i do a meeting yeah and, and we so, have so so we we'll agreed to a meeting. So do we, you know, we're gonna. Uh, be, do you want to meet with the, the selectmen in a joint meeting? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to that. Okay. So when when, yeah. when would it be? I think we have to check with um, with uh, Debbie Egan because there's five of them and three of us. 
Um, I think we should probably, just a suggestion is that we put together some times that we can meet and give them to Deb Egan and ask what the select marks for the selectmen. Okay. And I, I really could care less if we meet here or there. Okay. Um, whatever. Um, but it, 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 it'll be a public meeting uh, posted. And I think we should come up with an agenda of what we want to talk about. Fair I think enough, we put it right there. The, right there, you know, 4169B, bylaws, and chapter 11. And, uh, 1946. Okay. Was that not agreed to last meeting? Yes, but it wasn't on our, we, we talked about it last week. Oh, okay. Now it's on our agenda. We can talk about it. Oh, I see. And now oh, okay. it's procedural oh, okay. stuff. Okay, so. so now we can agree to do this. So do we have a motion to meet with the... Um, I'll make a motion that we, we work with Deb Egan to uh, schedule a joint session between the selectmen and the board of water commissioners. Do have a second on that? I'll second, but not next week. <laughs> I read. Okay. Yeah. I'd like a motion to uh, enter this into the record. And it's going to, you know, I want it in the record. Uh, it's a statement that I made today. I don't think you need a motion. You already put it in the record. It's already in the record. Okay. All right. We've done it. Yeah, we approved the minutes. Okay, so the next item can I, is. Can I make a point? Okay. I made this point last night at the Board of Selectmen. I still don't understand why the Selectmen and the Board of Water Commissioners wouldn't avail themselves of legal expertise in that discussion. So all I can see is it going round and round about a piece of the actual wording of legislation and legal, the legal standing of a document which refers to piece of legislation which apparently is not wasn't passed by the town so those are, strike me as being kind of legal complications which ought, which are at the heart of this issue I don't yeah. know how you're going to resolve one yeah. without getting at least sufficient expertise at the table to to address those issues I think if I make a comment that uh, the selectmen this will be discussion only and that the selectmen I believe want to take our discussion and pass it to the illegal um, town lawyer, okay? And so to make them look at the discussion to see what... What's an illegal town, who is an illegal town lawyer? Did I say illegal? Yes. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, okay. I'd have to say that the discussion would lead to passing the information to the, uh, to the town attorney. Are you saying generating questions to go to the attorneys? Well, that's that's my impression of listening to the uh, meeting last night with the selectmen. So uh, it, it would bring the, to light uh, that, and I believe that the uh, this chapter forty one sixty nine B was adopted by the town. It was adopted in two thousand and two, uh, and so I don't I don't see how this uh, enabling uh, statute uh, would uh, not be. Um, would be negated by uh, a town legal attorney opinion. So I, uh, th I think that's what it's going to lead to. So, uh, do you, are you suggesting we should have a lawyer there at the meeting? Well, I, yeah. I, yes, and if you're going to frame up the question, because presumably the lawyer is going to have to do research. I yeah. think to differ with that because they never, they've never met. So why don't, why don't we let them meet as professionals and see if they can come to a conclusion before we hire any more legal people, any more expenses. Well, I mean, I understand your point, but I think allowing them to meet in an open forum and see if it progresses. It hasn't occurred yet. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so next week's out, we're looking at the week. Chair, I think your, your letter that you read is a little premature. I think you should have read that before the selectmen meeting and the discussion with them on the laws that govern the water department as I read the, what the board of selectmen is I've been trying to get this message out, Mr. Martin, that, for a while. Uh, I think that, that the, the, the letter should be read at the joint meeting, the board of selectmen, and it should be one of the issues of topic is the uh, uh, interpretation of the law. Yeah. And, and, and well, I, the, the, the selectmen will have the benefit of having this statement that they can refer to when they prepare for their meeting, their joint meeting. Okay, so the, uh, the next uh, item agenda is investigation of department management, contracting, and comp time items. This is Tim where I said, can we flip the yeah. new business? Well, I, I'm going to... 
we're, we're not going to talk. I, I reviewed my uh, position on these things. I did my homework, and I, I think that it'd be the best interest of this board to wait till we uh, are able to get legal representation before we discuss any of these management issues. And um, so that you know, we don't you know, um, I don't know. I would table them all. Table. We're going to table them all, and uh, we're going to uh, advance uh, this thing through trying to uh, you know establish uh, our ability to get the legal counsel to help us with this matter, and uh, then we can have them look at this information and then decide what we're going to do with it. So how do you obtain legal counsel? Does that come before the public meeting? I don't understand. I didn't think it, it, if the, the, the case is that uh, we already have the ability to hire legal counsel, mm -hmm. the, the, the problem is whether or not, uh, you know, the, t the, the selectmen have to sign off on the bills they're not signing off in the bills. That's the reason why the two contractors left the premises, so to speak. I understand, but what? And uh, right. let me finish. And then if if we can settle this and we can hire uh, our own attorney to, to, to establish, you know, you know what our authority is, then we would be able to uh, uh, get this issue resolved. Authority is specifically <coughs> regarding this incident, or? What incident? The putting uh, the superintendent on admin leave would pay. Is that what the? I, I'm not sure what the legal oh. counsel would be for. Yeah, I'm I, still I'm confused. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to comment on that at this point. So, it's not. It was not. Uh, I already what stated. What is is the authority of as to appoint counsel? Right. Yeah. Okay. It, it is there. There. Under their jurisdiction, their prerogative yeah. as to appoint counsel for any town board. So if you except table for, this until except you Except for the electric light department, who runs under Chapter 164. Okay, the electric light department is totally different. They run under Chapter 164. If you notice at town meeting, yeah. they get up one time yeah. for one motion, one vote to run under Chapter 164. They run, they can write their own checks, they have their own accounts. The water department does not run under the same chapter. Okay? So I'm aware the water, of that. I'm aware of that. Department runs under Chapter 11. Okay? Okay, so. And, and, and also, that the water department runs under the, 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 the observation in, in, in its protocol to the Board of Selectmen. In its protocol. You have to follow protocol. Okay? There is a protocol for this. You have to know it. And you have to follow, it. and you have to work with the board of selectmen, the water board, and and the board of selectmen. Okay, and from what I've seen go, going, you're not working together. No one is. Okay? Well, if we table these things until you get an attorney, anyways, so we'll be I, I understand that. Let's see. We need to move meeting. on. So. They're going to abolish the water board. Yeah. Right. That's what's going to happen. Mr. Toomey. I, I don't think so, Mr. Martin. I so, think so, Mr. Toomey. So we're going to table that. Until we can establish to get our own attorney to uh, guide us in on that. Uh, the new business is address open meeting law complaints responses. Um, the board um, didn't want to adopt my thing last time, so I passed it in. They are not board responses. The OML violations are directed against you, mm -hmm. Tim, and you, Stu, right. directly. All right, so they, they've been responded to. Uh, I haven't, uh, um, uh, I don't have copies tonight, so uh, they're available uh, upon request. And uh, anyways, uh, that, that, uh, that's what's going on. There's still some more uh, open meeting laws that have to, uh, complaints that need to be addressed. If you two want to talk, I mean, this is, an, it's on the agenda. If you two wish to speak now, you certainly can. If you want to confer about these OMLs. But other than that, you can't do it outside of this meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> a lot of this thing has been responded to so far and, uh, but see, without the minutes, it's really hard to follow. Because if we had had the minutes from last week's meeting and the week before, we talked about these things. And, and but not having them, and you saying you didn't accept my thing, that sounds a bit unprofessional, okay. to be honest. It's hard to follow. <coughs>
too. Did you respond to the open meeting laws violations that were that you received? I haven't received any yet. Uh, but what happens if they are responded to, uh, and not to the satisfaction of the um, the the, um, the filing person, then it goes to the attorney general's office. So if 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 you did absolutely nothing, it would go up to the attorney general's office and they would investigate it. So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, it's your opportunity to try to resolve these issues within a 10-day or 14-day period before it goes upstairs. Mm -hmm. So they're all obviously going to go upstairs. Okay. The open meeting law complaint that you received is supposed to be disseminated to the board members. Which one? This one here I just got tonight? <coughs> I don't know. I lost count, Bob. Did, did I lost you, count. You, re, you responded to the Attorney General, okay? Yeah. I, the board. When it came in, you was chairman to disseminate to the board the complaint. Yeah. So they should all have copies. Uh, I'll have to check. You don't have any copies? No. Okay. So. No. Okay. Yeah. So, we've, all right. So, discuss status of cross connection. Superintendent, speak for us. Um, back in um, on 827, we um, the water board signed a purchase order to allow me to hire Water Safety Services Incorporated to go out in the distribution system and conduct um, cross connection control surveys under the Mass DEP drinking water regulations 310 22. Um, 22 uh, Raleigh Water Department is required to go out and um, look for um, the cross connections. Um, to date, they've surveyed 56 facilities, and um, out of 56, 52 of those had no cross connections, which is a good thing. So there are four active cross connections that they found that do not have uh, the proper protection, uh, which is a backflow preventer. Mm -hmm. So they will be working with those four facilities to get them into compliance. Um, in, in, in um, advising them on the, uh, the correct device. Uh, so far, uh, what this has cost is $116. So right now the water department is only paying $116. They still have 20 more facilities to survey. And um, once the uh, surveying is completed, they'll generate a complete report. And then we'll be in compliance with uh, 2222. Can I ask a question? What about the residential side of this? So this is good for this, but I mean, people have had houses that had wells and they went to the town and back. How do we find those? Okay, so where are, um, we stop at the residential. We, we can't, the, um, the regulation only covers for us to go out to any commercial, industrial, institutional, governmental building. Mm -hmm. um, residential comes under the plumbing inspector, board of health, what we are doing is I am working with the Board of Health and um, the plumbing inspector. Um, things got a little crazy, so we haven't really met on it. I, I, I believe the Board of Health has, has talked about it at their meetings, but we're looking at um, something um, that the three departments will be able to work together uh, for residential. But we have no jurisdiction um, in residential. So like when a person has an irrigation system in their home, that comes on. That has to have a, a, P, a PVB, a pressure vacuum breaker, installed with that to prevent any water that's unpotable getting back in, like you know, from the lawn irrigation. That comes under um, when they go to um, in the plumbing, the plumbing codes for the town that we have to comply with that. So that's not anything we can enforce. We only enforce uh, business, the businesses. So, but the, is this actively being pursued by the Board of Health and the uh, the plumbing inspector? Excuse me. We'll have to get you uh, back to the board with an update on that. Um, I have not spoke with um, with either the plumbing inspector or the board of health. Because it's a significant public health hazard, so I assume it the is. board of health will be all over this. It is. Okay. I'll have to get you an update. Could you for the next meeting? I sure can. Okay, thank you. Just what they're doing about it. Hmm. So, of the four uh, 
cross-connection issues, um, specifically, what are they? Are they like wells, or are they uh, irrigation systems, or are they, what are they? Uh, one facility is, is a machine processing. So what it is, is any, any piece of equipment, um, a dentist office, for example, there's water supply to the individual chairs. So a dentist office would be required to put in an RPZ um, to isolate the chair. So each chair would be protected. So the water, while they're cleaning the guy in this chair, is it getting over to that guy in the chair on the end? So that's what the uh, what they're looking for. So one of them is um, a machine machine process. So it must be machinery that uses water in their process, and they'll need to require to put um, an RPZ uh, after the water here because of the containment. Um, <coughs> another one is. Uh, Irrigation, they found irrigation, uh, did not have the PRV, so they'll be they'd have to install that. The third one needs an RPZ, um, at the, uh, they need two RPZs, uh, looks like it's a nail salon. And then um, this other, the last one also needs to put in an RPZ. An RPZ is a device that they put in what they would classify as a high hazard, reduced pressure backflow preventer. Mm -hmm. um, that would go in uh, for containment after the meter. And then Massachusetts uh, law is to the last free flowing tap. So not only is that they would do it at the meter, but they would do it at all the fixtures. So all in a, like in a hair salon, if there wasn't an air gap at the hair washing sinks, um, the hose that they go to spray the hair, they'd have to put some devices on that to prevent that from getting back out to the system. So they'll be working with those, um, those four, um, businesses to um, get them through the permitting process and, and um, advise them how to get the correct way to install them for the regulation. When did the regulation come into effect? Oh, 30, 30 years ago. And then why are these things just being detected now? New businesses. Um, we're not required to survey every year. Uh, we are required to survey, uh, like if you have all high hazard facilities, if you classify a place as a high hazard, they should be surveyed like every one to three years. And then the regular ones, which, um, you know, like, a, um, like what those, uh, like at the gas station, they have the quick stop and they have like the slushy and your coffee. Those are like not considered high hazard like a dentist office would be because um, it's the nature of what goes on inside the building. Those are like every three to five years surveying. So the water department hasn't done surveys since the initial. What you're looking for is the new businesses that have popped up that might have slipped through the cracks in any other process you have in town to get these devices permitted. So we survey, and, and actually, uh, it's $116 so far. Okay. Because they only charge us for, um, they don't charge us for every survey. They charge us only if they find cross connections. Mm -hmm. So they've only charged us $116. That's pretty cheap. Jerry, <laughs> Terry. When you were fully staffed, you had the uh, program, the uh, cross connection program, and the uh, back flow prevention program mm -hmm. that was uh, kept on top of. Okay. Since you've sensed the department of staffing issues, I believe that these have fallen through the cracks. There was a program that uh, we always had the leak detection, cross connection, and back flow prevention. Okay, so. This is one of many things that have fallen through the cracks because of the staffing. And, and if you don't have the staff to do it, it doesn't get done. And I do believe that's what happened in this. Okay, thank you. Leak detection update. Um, so we had, uh, back in um, August and September, we had um, hired um, Water and Waste Pipe Testing Incorporated to perform a system-wide leak detection on the 43 miles of water main in the system, and the results were prevented, uh, presented to the board, and um, we had the, uh, the um, 89,000 89, um, gallons per day were being lost in the system for a total of 32.5 million gallons lost per year in, in, under, in leaks that went undetected. 
And so where we're at right now, we've um, been doing really good. Um, we have, uh, I gave the board um, an update, um, it's in your packet, on where we stand and what we still have to do, but to date we fixed one or two, three, four, five, six. Ten leaks have been fixed. Um, I think there was a total of 12, 12 of them. So ten have been fixed, uh, and there are uh, 14, so there's four, four more that will be um, on the schedule to be fixed this week, and then we will have fixed all the leaks that were detected. So that's, and we should start to see some of that um, from the water we're producing at the plant. We should start to see that uh, decrease because the water plant and well number two have been feeding these leaks. So we should start to see over time a decrease in what we produce, which is to save money. A little less wear and tear on the plant. Yes. Okay. Um, I just got a question, uh, Mr. Martin. Do we have a, we had these surveys done in the past. Yes, we have. Yeah, and then would we, 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 we had the surveys done. We haven't done uh, yearly. Every year we did a lead, lead survey, and and uh, we had uh, we had a lot of programs going because we were so fully staffed. And I understand that this department has not been fully staffed for quite a while, so a lot of things have gone uh, uh, have gone amiss. Okay, we were on a gate valve program, if you remember, Mr. Toomey, that we were replacing gate valves on the old, the old trunks, main trunks in town. We replaced uh, probably about half of them on this side of town, okay, whereas 133 was done, redone years ago, years ago and uh, the, the, the main was replaced down 133. Okay, there's some still some old ones around. There's, there was one the gate valve program, there was the leak survey program, there was the cross connection program, there was you still have the sampling program, I hope, and there was the uh, 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 um, backflow prevention program, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of programs, okay, that, that, that is entailed in the daily operations of this department in which your superintendent is in charge of, yeah. okay? And, and because of the lack of superintendents <coughs> and, and employees and that and record keeping and everything, it has fallen behind quite a bit. Okay, so I, I, I just wanted to ask a question. Did you recall, are we losing 20% of the water supply through all these leaks years I, ago? I never recalled it, it to be that extreme, okay? The only time that we had extreme uh, loss of water was a couple times we had uh, we uh, opened the uh, uh, interconnection with Georgetown when they had the fire up in Georgetown up back. Um, we had to open that in interconnection, of course, to, to, to boost Georgetown's pressure for the fire. And there was also uh, a, fire, a cup fire uh, um, in Newbury when the uh, house went up, uh, uh, they used our last hybrid down on 1A. The only time that I can remember in history as a, 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 a large loss of water was for fire protection. And when we, 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 we had uh, um, some big fires, that, that we helped other towns with. And, that's logical. And, 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 and that's our... Yeah, know, but the, this, this leak right. detection survey that's being done right now has determined that there's a lot of leaks in town on the piping. It isn't, it isn't tied into fires or well, they you know, are, selling when water. When was the last one? one? Exactly. When, when was the last one? The last, I... I Do you recall know, anything know like uh, that, that they could put some uh, numbers to the leaks that were in town with this leak? Well, I, I know when, when, when I was on the board, we did it every year. We had a, we had a, a, we had a firm come in to do a leak survey every year. And, and But see, we had the crew, okay? Uh, my guy, our guys went out and, and, and took care of it. We didn't have to hire a contractor. Well, I, I see that, but do, when there was a leak detected, did you guys go out and Absolutely. send it? And re repair those he, leaks? He would give us a report. Yeah. Okay. They would give us a report of the leaks, where they were, and everything. Yeah. And, and as you know, as you, as you as you should know, okay, we did with the Merrimack Valley Planning uh, Planning Commission. Yeah. Uh, located all our gate valves, all our mains, and all all the hydrants and everything on on the map. So that they were no, but Mr. Out. Martin, but the, the, the question know, specifically is, if we had, no, wait a minute, specifically, if there was a, uh, did anybody put a quanti quantity on the amount of water that was lost through the leak leaking pipes? 
Because well, that's what we're seeing right now. Well, in your, in your year-end report to the DEP, which you're required, you're required to give, you're required, okay, from your master meter, from what you've done. I'm, uh, I'm fully aware of that. I'm fully aware of that. Okay, as in your laws. Okay, and then you, you, you go with your fire department, you look as to the fires, and you do, a, you, you do an estimate as to how many fires and an estimate of your water loss due to uh, uh, you know, fire protection, because that's not needed, okay? So you have that loss. As to a, a 20, 20 million gallons a year loss, that's 20 or 30 million gallons a year loss, um, that's extreme. Was that, it, that, that, what was it running back happened. years ago? Excuse me? What was it running back years ago? I mean, you, you, you lose 10, maybe 10, 15 million gallons over the year of, of, of uh, uh, you know. Of water that's water not sold? That, yes, of water that's not sold, you know. Uh, um, um, over that, I, I would say, you know, uh, um, you, you have some leaks. But see, also, it, it, you know, where is that you haven't done, you haven't been doing this for a few years. So, so your leaks have been going on a long time. Now, if you look and see what a one-eighth hole, one-eighth leakage in your home can do a month, you know, multiply that. It's huge. It's so it's huge. sort of like not knowing the rate increases because it hadn't been done in a long time. So low and slow incremental increases catch up with time, right? Like like the same thing with the leaks. If it's let to go for a long time because the administration isn't allowed to do her job or the town isn't allowed to, to do the water department's business, then this is going to happen. The, this all neglect is, well, is, is part of the issue. So that's why we need to... It seems to me that you should know that information. I don't really know if you're asking him the question to educate us or if you really know the information and it's it's just more of a, of a kind of a stall thing. I don't understand why that information that, that Scott provided you, you don't already know. It's well, 2008. You know, yeah, he, he's got he's got he's got a lot of experience. No, I, I totally yeah. know that. I yeah. totally know. That. Yeah. And you know, I was uh, I was just curious to know because oh, okay. what we're being told it was like thirty million gallons that was lost. Thirty-two point five. Yeah, thirty-two point okay. five million gallons. Since two thousand. You know, and I, I'm be honest with you, I don't have the time to go through all the records to find out. This is not really my job, but he he, he, he was a walking dictionary with this. No, it's true. I know he does have a lot of information, yeah. but it also. And I, we have the benefit of him coming right, in today. Right. No, it's so. good. He's, he's an yeah. expert there. Well, but you it should be your job. How fast a fire too. truck will pump out 3,000 gallons of water? How fast will a fire pump truck pump out you know, 3,000 gallons of water yeah. with three, whole, three six inch hoses coming off of it? Very fast. Minutes. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know, a, a 10 to 15 million gallon loss in a year, depending upon. Well, how, many, how many gallons do you think we lose on a flushing? Uh, oh, oh, and you're flushing, of yeah. course, that's interpreted too, because you're opening six inch, you're opening those plugs. Yeah, but did you guys ever flushing. figure out, you know, so, how many gallons oh, yeah. we lost on a oh, flushing? Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can gauge it, absolutely. Okay. All right. You can gauge it. Uh, you gauge it. In the interest of time, you need to move on. Taking readings off yeah. your yeah. master meter yeah. before you flush. And when you flush, okay. and it'll show you exactly what you use. Okay, so I, I was just curious, I, you know, because you were here, you know, I had an opportunity to ask it. So, yes, all right, Tr uh, treatment plant sweating problem update. Sorry, can I just close this out? Okay. Is, is the data compiled and, and stored somewhere from, from the past in terms of leak detection and usage? I mean, is there a fire? Well, it would be uh, whatever they had the, on the water meters from the all three wealth things, and it would be what we build out for water, right? Right, Scott? Well, you have to send yeah. in monthly reports, if, yeah. if, if yeah. I'm correct, to the DEP of what you pumped. Yeah. Okay, of what, you, what each station pumped, <coughs> and what your, what your master meter pumps. Yeah, so the, and, the, the and, operators and, do and that. The sales. So. You, so you have all the data, and with, with the meters you have in town, the new meters we put in, they record, they record to the minute, right. okay? So you, you have all the data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, did you have another question, Mr. Conley? Yes, I'm uh, Steve Conley, Sr. <laughs> uh, this is a very difficult job. <laughs> and uh, you know, all the changes that have occurred here in the last, what, two or three years. And I just want to say that, uh, you know, I've known 
Mr. Darzell and Mr. Tony for a long time. And there's no doubt in my mind that they got on the board to see what they could do to save money to the citizens. And uh, I don't think there was any intention other than that. And I just want to thank you for, obviously you've done a lot of work. A lot of people have done a lot of work here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to thank the two of you for what you've uh, endeavored to do. And I want you to know that. Yeah. That's important and I think that you you deserve respect for what you're trying to do. And, and uh, you know, we all got to get along and I think we all want cheaper water. And. Uh, so I just want to say that, and uh, I appreciate the work that you have done. Thank you. I, I do. Thank you, Mr. Conley. Um, the uh, treatment plant sweating problem update. John, did you want me to? Or do you? Hey, yeah, uh, you can speak to this. I mean, it's just not good news. Bottom line. You want me to deliver the bad news? Please. <laughs> um, so we we have a condensation um, issue at the water plant, a uh, very severe one. Uh, the water operators um, have to mop up the floor. Uh, we've been already have experiencing problems with uh, process equipment, uh, relays, electrical uh, components that operate the treatment plant. And we've had to replace some things prematurely. Um, originally, uh, Weston and Sampson um, had provided uh, the board with two options. One was um, to put in four portable units that you would plug in and put them around the plant, and they're about the size of a washing machine. And then the other option was um, a, a wall or ceiling mount unit. And so, having been familiar with having to retrofit dehumidification systems and then I, you know, working with John Manning, the board voted to allow John to work with me directly on this in some of the research that he found. I asked Tanner and Howard to uh, uh, give me an engineering estimate, which the board has, um, which is a little more in depth with some calculations and things. And in order to uh, correctly retrofit the plant, um, they gave given the, us an engineering estimate of $400,000 to come in and retrofit the facility, um, which I will be bringing before the board during the budget season as a capital improvement. Now, we did have an opportunity um, to use uh, SRF funding, um, but since I was not here to follow through, we did not meet the deadline to get this in the existing loan, which we would have only had to pay principal and interest on. So now we're on the hook for the full, re, you know, retrofit. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. I don't believe that. That's, that's just I don't believe that. I think this SRF money is still available. <laughs> yeah, let, let me ask you a question, if I may. But there must be deadlines and rules to follow, don't you think? Well, yeah. Of course there are. Well, so yeah, we, we borrowed the, the certain dollar amount. There's still a balance that we can still tap into. Whether or not the balance that we can tap into exceeds this amount, this 400000 I don't know. Yeah, but once the deadline falls, Tim, once the deadline goes by, if it has, you're, you're, you're out of the... And the we, we, we haven't spent the total forward. amount that we borrowed, Scott. So. But, but if the deadline of after the completion, okay, if the DEP has closed the deadline on your SRF, okay, okay and you're, you're, you're this, that's it. Do we have a letter to substantiate that, that they've closed that? I gave yeah. the board a memo on August 14, 2014, outlining the remaining of the loan <coughs> and what we needed to do with the deadlines on August 14th. So that's the ripple effect. And we've missed the happened. deadlines. Bottom line. Stu, you said you had a question? Yes. Uh, may I ask what became of uh, Weston Sampson, the engineering firm's, their estimate somewhere around fifty to sixty thousand dollars. The um, the engineering estimate was uh, forty thousand dollars for the unit to install it uh, for the wall mount, and I think what it was fourteen thousand for the four portables. Yeah. But if you read the report from Tate and Howard, it's a lot more complete than what we got from Weston and Sampson. We got cut sheets from Weston and Sampson. I could have gone online 
and done research for the board and gave you the same thing. Yeah, I also but went out to uh, a couple of firms that use out uh, in the private sector with, uh, that do that kind of engineering, and they were really um, not dismissive, but they, they just said that if you'd be putting in the portables or the other solution, they said you'd be wasting, you'd, you'd just be spending the money not solving the problem, mm -hmm. given the space. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't have the money to get them to do a write-up. It was a more of a, a favor. They came out, sure, looked at it, and just what, they just said, you, you, you need a much more different solution. And that's what the Tater and Howard one is. Um, I don't know if you want to, Harris, you know, I don't know who another firm besides Tater and how it is, but uh, it's going to be the same kind of story. Um, and, but this is one that you guys have used in the past. Um, and if you go through the documents, I mean, it's it's right by the numbers, and um, and it jives with what the other outside people said. So, uh, um, it's a very serious problem, and it has to be addressed sooner than later. Well, if we don't address it, then what we you know destroy it again. We're going to wreck machinery in the building. That's <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah. I actually you could also look into doing the Commonwealth Capital Program again. Okay, and, and, and reapplying for right. SRF mm -hmm. money under a new project. Okay, under under uh, 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 you know under that you. Yeah, that's what we did at the you, school. For you the might want to look down that avenue before yes. incurring full costs. You might want to look down to see if you can. Uh, um, uh, reapply. Reapply to the Commonwealth Capital Program. Get another uh, score for the town and see how you align with the uh, on 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 the uh, F SRF funding as to uh, getting it at a two percent. The bottom line is you cannot afford at a twelve point three million dollar plant. You cannot afford not to repair it. Oh, I have a question. How long is the uh, sweating problem going on? Manny Since it opened Since early. It opened. Yeah. It just the first year was, you know, it was, and this is from what I saw from the outside, they were all just getting up and running and it was partial. But this year was the first complete year of operation, correct? Yes. And I actually was a little skeptical until I walked in there. And it's atrocious. I mean, there was that much water in spots. And I think, Stu, were you there today? You no. Know, Tim? Well, you saw the, the puddles? I, I did some research myself, and uh, it becomes a real problem after three or four days of uh, humid weather because the humid weather enters the building, and then the sweating occurs because of the humidity in the air. But if you had one humid day, you would have minimal uh, sweating going on. So. Uh, if there is, um, I think there's a debate going on here as far as how much uh, of a big severe problem this is. But I'm looking at the uh, uh, 60,000 versus is 400 and how many thousand? 400,000. $400,000. That's quite a, a spread between the two solutions. They're both big qualified firms. I don't know why the, the difference is um, uh, so great. I have an editorial comment with respect to Weston and Sampson's estimate, and yeah. that um, given their performance in the in the completion of the water department, forgetting to put in the septic system, not even recommending this. Uh, if I if I was working with these guys right now in my Connecticut project, I, you know they'd be gone. Yeah, um, just unbelievable. And then to come back and say, oh, well, so we well, I mean, it's just right. it's a it, to me it speaks Mickey Mouse solution. No, I throw in a couple of dehumidifiers. I think the merits uh, a little bit more uh, investigation, but uh, uh, they were in here. They we we asked them a lot of questions about it, and uh, they uh, explained it to us and. They also brought up the fact that there are other plants in the area that don't have this dehumidification thing. I don't know what the reason was why we didn't put it in be to begin with, but you know we didn't put it in. Now we're looking at uh, um, you know a uh, great expense to put it back into it. Well, the water coming out of the ground is 55 degrees. It's coming out of those three giant wells mm -hmm. and those big pipes. When that comes up, it's 55 degrees. So the relative humidity. You don't have to have a typical New England humid day. You just have a regular summer day, and there's a lot of water in there. And it, and it went in the plant three different times on various days, and it's the same. I mean, it's just a lot of water. But is it unexpected? Was it all this unexpected, or you thought, thought there would be some kind of, no? I wasn't I part haven't. of it, I don't know. Oh. Anybody near you? I don't think a, a water treatment plant is supposed to be dry to begin with. I what think really it's, disturbs me. There's a lot of uh, 
Water, water moving water. through that plant? Electric well. The yeah. electric yeah. room. Yeah. That, that's a Mr. death Mr. waiting to happen. Right. That scared me. When we went out to Gardner, I don't know if you, I don't remember if you no, went or not. We went out to Gardner to look at their facility. Okay, they had two skids running out there. The same as, I have not seen the filtration plant up here yet. I have not seen the in, inside. Um, but I know that at, uh, at the, the Gardner facility, okay, in, in those skids, they had like a concrete sump that was built with a grate on top that pumped any excess leakage, seepage, uh, uh, um, that it, it was pumped out. Although they were pumping out of the lake, they were not. They were not pumping out of the ground. They were pumping out of Crystal Lake, which you know uh, um, they didn't have to pull uh, uh, 70 feet. They were built underground pipes right out to the lake, and it came right in. Okay, um, I don't. I didn't see any sweating problems when we went there. Um, I went there there with with uh, Weston and Sampson and uh, Mr. Ricker. I don't. I don't believe Mr. Toomey, you went out there. We invited the board of selectmen at that at that time, and I think don't believe any of the board of selectmen made it to go out and see Gardner. Uh, you know, I, I know there was some conflict in in in. Uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, I we don't I don't want to have an attendance thing here about right. who went there and what. Yeah, but, but so there's it, it, there's water on the floor. They did not have that problem. Yeah. Up there, okay. Is what I'm saying. They did not have an issue with because they had built in to the plant. Okay, a a a a, uh, uh, a sump. A sump. Yeah. Okay, or like a, and, and they had grates on top of it, which the employee, which you walked on. Yeah. Okay, and it was pumped out. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you have sweating, you have leakage, you're dealing with water. You're going to have that. That's mm -hmm. a known, that's a given. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, that's one way to handle it. That's, that's one way to handle it. How, how, it do that how it was handled, yes, West well, did, Samson okay. did. Although that, Gardner was a retrofit, it, oh, wasn't okay. a full, awesome. it wasn't a full build, it was a retrofit so in, they, from another run, from another, uh, uh, um, another facility. So, what do we want to do, Tim? I, I think it's and the merits looking into further if it, the two different prices are uh, 60 versus 400,000 um, I think we got to get some more opinions another um, engineering opinion is yeah you, is there another firm you can go to I can I don't know if, it will, um, if I contact another a agency um, if they will charge us sure. you know normally you get these types of things when you put something out to bid, you see where your prices come in. Maybe it makes sense to try to reapply again as a new project, you know, for the funding. Well, right. can I have a copy of that um, document that you gave us over in August? I want to find out about this say, SRF. It's my memo. You should yeah. have my memo. You know, I gave it to the board. I know, but I have a lot of memos, uh, <laughs> Superintendent. I, I don't think I could put my hands on it. So okay. would you mind making a copy of it for me, please? Yeah. Right. Can we put this on the agenda for the next meeting as well? Okay. Yeah. We should. And Mary Beth, if you can see, see what you can do about another frame. And then Kim can look at that. And then, and does that still give you enough running room to put something together for the budget season? Yeah, because we're not going to start talking about that unless the board decides otherwise until maybe January, December, January, preliminary budget talk. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could um, um, get a copy of both proposals so we could look at that. Of uh, which one? The uh, Weston and Sampson, and then. Uh, you, you have that, Mr. Toomey. Okay. And you have a copy in your packet that I just put there for Tater and Howard. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'll go through my stuff, okay? You want to join this one? It's imperative to the problems taken care of before next summer is too much weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good yeah, is, is Mr. Martin mentioned um, that the Gardner plant had a sump system. Is that a, is that an actual option at, at your at the new treatment plant? Hmm. It's the issue. I mean, it's going to be humid. 
period. And dehumidification sounds like a big, it's, gonna, it's not going to be an optimal solution. So you're looking at the margin between dehumidification where there's still lots of moisture in the air and trapping and removing the standing water, which would be the sump, presumably the sump pump system. But I'm not, I'm no expert. I'm not an engineer either, but looking at it, and, and Stu mentioned it too, is one of the places that the water is coming down is the 440 boxes, which are waterproof. Now, I have a waterproof box on the outside of my house I've replaced twice. Um, so I, I don't have a great faith in that. Um, and that's the last place you want water. Right. The condensation is coming right down the top of it. That's one. And then I don't know what kind of plant guide there is, but with the one that we have, there's, there's a whole slew of equipment in there. And the water, well, maybe we could get rid of it on the floor. It's coming down on the equipment, which is, you know, yeah, we can maybe get rid of it, but it's the fact of it coming down on top of this wicked expensive stuff that we've got in there that stresses me out. So, so that just raises a separate issue, which is that, that sounds like an engineering right. <laughs> malpractice in terms of the design of this thing. So those are your words. Mm. <laughs> Well, is there any recourse? I wonder. Well, what recourse is there for the right. the, the, the warranty flaws and the design? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Peterson. Very, very quickly. Uh, if what Mr. Uh, Patton said is that they're pumping pond water at 70, between 70 and 80 degrees probably during the summer. There's a big difference in the condensation produced yeah, between that and 55 degree water that we're pumping out of the ground. Yeah. I know my water that comes in from the street, from the town system, it's already gone through the entire town system. And I get a sweating problem mm -hmm. in my basement in the summertime. So if I'm getting a sweating problem with the water coming out of the treatment plant and being blended with everything else, I, I've been up there and observed the water, and it's a horrendous amount of water. It's not only on the equipment, but it's a safety issue for the employee. Yeah, I agree. Safety okay. for sure. So, so is there is there recourse with the engine with the original contractors? <coughs> yeah, long course. Mm. It's not going to solve the problem mm -hmm. that we have immediately. Okay, Tim, any, do you, Tim, Stu, what do you think? Is it? It's just my opinion. How, do you, how, how can you blame the contractor if it was not on the plant? That goes back to the engineer. Mm -hmm. okay. What about the designer of the plants? <coughs> we can point fingers all day long at the bottom oh, line. Get it right well, fixed. The, the, obviously, they're two the separate fix. issues. One is yeah. you need to fix. Later on, go after something. Exactly. Yeah. So then it boils down. Something gets right up there. Right. No, boils I down. agree. I totally but agree there's, with that. There's, time, there's, there's time is an issue as well. So it makes sense, while the problem is there, to get somebody to fully document the nature and scope of the, of the problem. And once you fix it, then you've got less of a less of <coughs> and and at least have that on 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 file to, um, and then consider what the recourse is i mean obviously the, the, the so stew's right if the, con if the contractor built to the plan then the, the, you can't hold the contractor but whoever designed it mm -hmm. they have professional liability insurance for right. that would cover <coughs> exactly this situation presumably mm. So it seems to me as though investigating the solution, investigating recourse, and investigating financing are three to-dos. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we ought to start with, uh, we do have a, a, a moisture problem down there. And uh, yeah, it could be resulting from a, uh, a design, uh, uh, they've left it out of the design for whatever reason, or it could be for whatever reason they didn't put it in the design to begin with. Uh, the question really is whether we spent uh, what was it, twenty thousand versus sixty thousand versus four hundred thousand to to remedy the thing. So uh, what 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 uh, does th this board want to do, and what what do we need to base it on? We're basing it on 
this Tate and Howard and Weston and Sampson. Weston and Sampson's got a price, Tate and Howard's got a price. I don't feel comfortable with the way things uh, progress in this department I'm just looking at two prices. I, I've always been a fan for three pricing. And it's, it's, it's a matter of, you know, going in and asking uh, somebody to come in and look at it and giving, giving us a price on, you know, what the remedy would be. So it, it might be a design. I don't know what, what's, what's entailed in the, this uh, quote for uh, um, Tate and Howard. So let's take a look at this, what it is, why it's costing so much. One of the firms I talked to, I said, would you be interested in getting this? They said they wouldn't touch it. Oh, yeah, yeah. why? Well, that would, because it's horrible, yeah. quote unquote. They said, this is, we, we won't do these jobs because they're horrible. That's his word. This, this type of job or just this, this job, job here? Dehumidification for that place, Okay. they just said was one of the worst. So what's, isn't any um, comment on the quality of work we got done. It's uh, more of, this is a real uh, issue with trying to you know, control humidity in a place that's producing... Uh, it was poorly designed. Uh, almost a million gallons a day, mm -hmm. so... It was poorly designed. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. did the Tater and Howard give you that estimate for free? Yes. Did they? Yeah. Well, you get a free estimate. I think if you really want to solve the problem, you better put an RFP out right. mm -hmm. so that these companies feel that they're, they're going to charge you. They got a, we got a severe, major problem up here. You should put out some kind of a request or proposal and let four or five, six firms that they help you come in and give us estimates. Then your, your board can make a decision. This is on, really, on, yeah. On evidence of what you want to do. Right now, you got, this you is got what they said and they said right. for free. And we all know what free advice gives us a lot of times. Okay. Uh, and to base uh, information and expenses on free advice for a problem of this magnitude and, and this cr critical nature is put together an RFP and get, get good people in to look at it. And, I mean, it's a major problem, safety-wise and equipment-wise. They take it more serious to an hour. Sure do. Mm -hmm. right. The proposed construction generally consists of furnishing and installing a natural gas dehumidifier system, condenser, and associated ductwork, plumbing, and electrical. The estimated pro probable cost, project cost, including engineering, construction, and contingency, is 400000 You just yeah. give me a general guess. So we yeah. Can build guess yeah. You're serious about fixing the problem. You need some serious uh, quotes or based on evidence that you got to pay for it again. We need some proposals to move forward. Well, they don't want, want to be the job, and they're setting it so high that you, uh, that's true. That yeah. you, uh, yeah, you well, raise themselves out of it, so they're not exactly. exactly. Yeah. I don't want to be going round and round like this in March. We need some proposals to move forward. Three minutes. Would the board like to make a motion to have me prepare an RFP for the board's review to put it out for a general new proposal? I'll this? make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, let's just get some yeah, good proposals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't, we'll still be going round and round the story. No, Cleans yeah. and shut off update. So, this, this, um, we started putting, um, doing shutoffs this year for accounts that were 60 days overdue to try to catch um, revenue that was owed to the water department. And um, we started doing this back in um, March of 2015. And the first go around, we had 193 notices for 60 days overdue and owed to the water department $74,322.61. Um, then we went through and we did another round. In June, we had 154 notices that went out, but this time it was only $36,352.52.82. Uh, we did another round in July. Uh, there were 92 notices uh, that went out uh, for $11,032. Uh, and this last round, we have 92 that we sent out, which will be shutting off next week for non-pay, 60 days overdue, uh, and this $21,100.95 owed to the water department. So 
to look at that, it's, it's, it's working really well because, you know, we initially started out with 193 and now we're down to 92. Mm -hmm. Even though it's still 92, but the dollar amount owed has gone down. Um, has gone down. So, what's going to happen after this? Uh, which I'll be meeting. I have a meeting on Thursday with um, the town treasurer and Panichak, uh, more so because of the, the record. Um, the next step after this will be the lien process. Um, so, we'll be um, be presenting to the board uh, the liens. We went through this process last year. Um, with the lien process um, so that we can recoup what's owed to the water department, the revenue. So um, I'll report back to the board at a later date when I have some information. I'll, I'll, I'll email the chairman for consideration of a, on a, an agenda. Are those residential and commercial accounts? Yes, yeah. it's, it's a mix. All right. Do we have a process where if someone's um, in dire straits, they can come and ask for an extension or things like that. We do. The, the water department offers a um, like a payment plan. Okay. So what what that is, uh, uh, the uh, Penichuk will look at the records and see what your average water bill is. <coughs> you would be required to pay what your average water bill is. Plus, they would break up what you owe in the arrears and break it up over six months. So you would have to pay that. You have to stick to the payment plan, and if you don't, then you go right back in where you know your water could be terminated. But this prevents if you go on a payment plan, it prevents the the shutoff. As long as you are making good on what you agreed to, um, we don't go out and tag the property. Okay. So, can I ask a question? The 92 um, people who would be in arrears, and that comes to 21,000. Yes. And and about how many? months per person yeah. or per defaulter is that because that's two hundred dollars per a little over two hundred dollars per, per lien it's right? six, 60 days overdue that's what that number is 92 so that, people are 60 days overdue so that's essentially saying their monthly bill is like the rest of ours it's about a hundred dollars a month now yeah, and they're two months behind, so that's two months. Well, some of these on the list, it's two thousand dollars, sixty days overdue, nine hundred dollars, sixty days overdue. There's some large, sixty days overdue, seven hundred, five hundred, three hundred. It's just the average. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. So there's there's eighteen hundred ratepayers, correct? Yes. And so there's ninety two. That's five percent of our ratepayers are in trouble. That's that's huge. Mm -hmm. but, and so Thursday, you're going to meet with everybody just to make sure, because we had that time where stuff wasn't getting processed, you know. And so Thursday, you'll meet with Penichunk and with the town of Raleigh to make sure all those people are, it's everything's been posted that we have, right? Well, look, um, we're, I actually have two things we're talking about in this agenda item. The first one was a shutoff. So Thursday oh, okay. is, is about um, the water leaks. <coughs> which this will go there lead really into, so it will okay. be on this process. And we, we, we put a water lien last year, we put it on, uh, on the, uh, went on the, uh, the tax bill. I see. Uh, how, how is the budget looking this year in terms of the revenue that we were expected to generate? Uh, we just signed a water commitment today. Did you want to? Do what? Go to the <coughs> numbers? I think the number was three three hundred fifty thousand. The uh, so this is the water commitment. and this is what what uh, the water board signs this every every um uh, what this is is this is our sales, this is what we mm -hmm. we have potentially the ability to collect if we pay. So right now um, it's three hundred and sixteen thousand and five hundred and thirty two dollars, which is what we're going to be which will be being billed um, on the tenth. And if we collected all that's what we would get. For this is for this billing cycle. Um, I think the last one it was like around two hundred, the last one two twenty, so uh, one seventy nine. So that's what we built, but that's not always what we bring back in because of you know, we have sixty days overdue and then there we have the thirty to ninety days overdue, so it's there's more. How, how are we running against expectations of when we set these water rates we're expected to over the course of a whole year, you know? get this much revenue in. How are we running against that plan? Well, uh, on a lot of usage thus far. Well, right now, I think, I, I apologize, I initially didn't understand, but we, right now we, we're, we're doing very well with the budget. 
um, and you know, we had the um, the leaks, the unexpected leaks that definitely needed to get fixed. So even with those uh, costs, I, I just gave all my paperwork to the finance committee for their meeting. But I think um, it was uh, we're at we have 80 88 percent left remaining in the budget. So we've only spent about 20 something percent of the total budget. So we're we're already into the next quarter. We've already gone through quarter one. So um, I would say we're under budget at this time if you base it upon a full quarter cycle. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, how do we end up, as of June 30th, how, yeah. how do we end up with that collections versus our projection, projected yeah, collections? And we talk about the $500,000 in, in overage and underspending, a lot of that's going to go if we're not collecting as much as we're spending or we're projected to collect. So do you have any figures on, as of June 30th, the last, the last fiscal year, what we projected to collect and what we actually collected so that we know what the difference is and how much money the board of is going to make up from the reserves or whatever. I do not have that information for this meeting, but I can certainly um, get that. I mean, they could, I know, I think people need it. I think the finance committee wants to see it. And, and when it comes time to for the state to go through the figures, they're going to be looking for that kind it's of thing. It's that time of year, so we'll be having to get that information together <coughs> anyway. We do that, I think we did it in October last year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Water storage maintenance update. Are you having your packet the uh, report from Underwater Solutions? Um, underwater Solutions is the uh, company that the water department has used um, for inspections and cleaning of interior and exterior of the water storage tank. Mm -hmm. um, Last budgeting process, I presented to the board, um, I asked the board for $80,000 for um, maintaining the water storage tank, uh, the, to recoat the exterior coatings based upon reports that I had from Underwater Solutions from a previous inspection. Um, the, ex the exterior coating of the water storage tank is failed, which means that the concrete which houses 1.2 million gallons of water is exposed. It's no different from the clear coat on your car. Once that scratches, you get a rust spot once it breaks through. So right now, I'm going to be asking the board again to please allow me to have the money in the next fiscal year to uh, recoat the exterior of the tank. It has uh, surface cracking, which will only get worse, and I, I, I I gave the board uh, a newspaper article, uh, which happened this summer, with the city of Peabody, when their million dollar, when their million gallon storage tank let go and took everything out in its path because due to lack of maintenance. So I would like the board to uh, please consider um, allowing this to go into the budget for next year, so that we don't end up in the newspaper like Peabody. When did you originally ask for that? Yeah. Um, Last year for the phone. I asked for the now. I asked for this budget fiscal 16. What have you asked for in the last year, the last budget process? Yes. How much did they give you? I didn't get any. I was denied. Nothing. Okay. You need to put it back in for budget season or budget season. Last year, the interior was clean. Am I right? This is the exterior. We did. Last year, it was the interior. Now yes. I want the exterior. You right. did the interior inspection when you sent the dive room, but that's. That um, was last year. And we did the exterior this year. But previous reports were, uh, that's why I asked the board, because I had previous reports that nothing had indicated to me that I could find that anything had been done on maintenance on the tank. You had the cleaning, because I think what you, I think what you guys did was, when the plant came on, you, know, you had the iron and manganese problem, there was a lot of sediment in there, which could you know, mask a water quality issue or you know, contamination, you know, stuff grows in there. So we clean it out. And that's what you did, which is a good thing. But the exterior needs to be taken care of, which is just as important. I mean, I know you understand about the scratching of the clear coat on the car, Stu. So it's the same kind of thing. There's nothing protecting that concrete. We don't address it. We stick it in there, and then the frost, frost get in there, freeze. Mm -hmm. Can we make it through the, the winter? Well, 
We're going to have to. Well, because that type of work is not done over the winter. Okay. What will end up happening is if the board allows that to go through in the budget, uh, we'll be, and I'll, I'll try to be on top of it and have it put it out to bid. And what will happen is all of those tank companies that do that for work, they have already have their schedule for the season. And they get booked up quick. For that. You have to bid that in like now. You have to put that out to bid now mm -hmm. so that you can get on a schedule. Any any zero tank, because it's, it's temperature. Um, you have to have a certain temperature mm -hmm. that can't paint. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that would be the problem. So if we get it in July of next year, I'll be putting it out to bid in the fall to be done if we can May or June the following year. Why wouldn't we put it out to bid now for next year? Where are the phone's gonna come from? Well, we don't, just because we put it out to bid it doesn't mean we're going to do it, but then, so if we put it out for bid for work next year, you don't pay for it until the work happens, correct? But how can I send a letter of award to a company now if we don't have the funds to cover it? There's no funds to do it. I don't think you can do that, John. I know it's a great idea, but I don't think you can do that. If you have sufficient money in your reserves, that's like when we talk about this $500,000, maybe at the spring town meeting special, you could get a transfer, um, an emergency transfer, and so that the work can be done at the start of the spring. Right. And if you put, if you agree to put in for a transfer, Mary Beth can have all the bid documents ready so that the, <coughs> the, the day after town meeting she can post the bids, mm -hmm. and at least we'll, you know, try to get it in before winter starts. We may not be able to, but it, we, we could try. But you have to have the money in, in hand before you go. We can see if there's anything creative we can do. And once again, well, we've had stuff at town meeting where we voted to transfer over. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. Are the failure points <coughs> visible? I mean, I mean, obviously the whole thing needs to be done. The, the, the issue is, can you just like if you have a scratch from your car, you can cover the. Well, it's mold, mildew, and cracking. Is you read the report, but it says the cracking has not gone through the concrete yet. And anybody that's had a concrete drive that spalls and the frost gets in there, it's just, you just don't want to. I understand. Just, just, in other words, it needs to be how, stuck over. How extensive is it at yeah, this point? It's got to be done. I understand it has to be done. The issue is, do you do something to prevent the problem? Nothing's going to be done before winter. It's going to freeze and open up more cracks mm -hmm. now. So is there anything that can be done temporarily in order to m mitigate or minimize the damage that's going to occur this winter? I don't think so. Okay, that was the question. No, that's a good question, but... Yeah, it's on the ground, so... So do we need to take some kind of action, Mary Beth, or are you just informing us that this is coming? Well, I had just, I, the report had come in while I was away, and I just wanted to make the board aware that, you know, we need to, the board would need to take, you know, consider this. Okay, uh, Superintendent Department of Operations report. Did you, uh, we have that, I gave that to you, this is on. The September report, and we have a chance to, um, it's in the packet. Yeah. I have no question. Can I back up for one minute? On a storage tank, could you get an idea what it would cost so we'd know? Well, I bought an engineering estimate last year when I prepared the budget. It was 80000 All right. Fair enough. So you either have to wait till next budget and that would be next July 1st to extend it or have an emergency um, at next spring's meeting, correct? Those are the only two options really it sounds like. Am I wrong? Other right? It'll be up to the you be up to the board. So why wouldn't you I, why aren't you vote why aren't you talking about this? This is like huge to me. As a citizen <coughs> no one wants to address why the discussion. You talking about the coating in the tank? Yes. Is there a town meeting this fall? No. no. So it's critical. It's just going to get worse. Right. But the season to get the work done, so I think it's 
Oh. It's past. It's, it, you can't do concrete work in the cold. You can't transfer the money to me. Um, our hands are tied. The only other thing is if it, it starts springing a leak, I'm sure we'd have to have some kind of an emergency plug or fix. But so do you? But you can uh, you can either decide to address it at next spring's annual town meeting as a transfer, mm -hmm. or wait till July. But make a decision. No decisions being made here. I think it's that you can do that, right? I, I think at the next town meeting. Uh, Ms. Lavasa said, get a transfer out of a surplus mm. money. Do that so you can take some action. That's what it is. Exactly. Get it done. Well, I, I think we have. We can actually get in the reserve account and then see if there's enough to cover that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we had the uh, tank clean last year. We did, and it was evaluated at that time. Was it? Inside. Yeah. Inside. Was it? A, was it? Uh, of critical importance that they needed to be done immediately, or did they say anything in their report when they evaluated the outside of the tank? Well, I don't. When, when somebody tells me that an exterior coating of a one million gallon storage tank is completely failed, a hundred percent failed. Okay. I don't need to hear any more to know what needs to be done. If you don't spend whatever it is, eighty thousand now, you'd be spending. Two million dollars later. You'd have to spend a brand new one. Peace of mind for everybody. We are required to inspect that tank um, monthly. So once a month, the operators climb up there. We have a sheet we have to fill out. Um, so they're going to be keeping an eye on these things um, a little more closely. It's not something normally we would do in looking for cracks because we're not experts. Mm -hmm. These these companies have um, equipment that they they. Um, they stick it on the concrete, and they can and they can tell. Um, so say they told that say they could tell there isn't like a legitimate leak, like something is happening, and your operator uh, saw it. What would you do? What is your plan? What would I would enact the emergency response plan, and I would evacuate the area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then would you you would have to get it fixed? Well, so it's, how are these? It's a lot more than that because if that tank failed, and let's just say we had a catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to compromise fire protection for the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll be you'll be in a mandatory water ban because we won't have that extra cushion of the 1.2 to float the system. Mm -hmm. There'll be a, there'll be a lot of repercussions for the town of that if we lost that tank. So all the more reason why we shouldn't wait till the budget process in July, right? We should get going and get it. See what's on the free cash. Right. See what, what we can do for the main town meeting to approve to move the money. When is your next meeting? Is there a meeting scheduled? Not yet. Would the board see, like these cracks were sounded and appear to be limited to the surface of the shot creek cover, coating the free avoid spalls and other obvious fatigue on the concrete at this time. Well, I'm looking to find out. You know, it's, it's you said it was failed. It failed. It's not not the the, the coating. But would the board like to make a motion to have me um, work with the treasure, town treasurer to see what options might be available? Yeah. That's I'll make that motion. Questions. I'll second it. Okay. I'll call That's the good. motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So Mary Beth, the next meeting, just come back and tell us what what we can do with with uh, Cameron. What your options could be on yeah, how, exactly. how we get it right. But yeah, and then we'll just figure out, at least put something, have a plan in place. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to caught short. We're moving forward. Good. Oh, wow. It's progress. It's progress. Good. Good. Okay, so discuss and vote on agenda items for the next meeting. And before we do that, you get down here Tuesday, October 13th. That's that's like three weeks in a row. I, I, that's just okay. Can we push that out to the uh, the 22nd? All right. The 20th. The 20th. Oh, I'm sorry. The 20th. Yep. Um, the other question I had before we get into this is, <coughs> excuse me, it's for an agenda item is. Um, with respect to meeting with the selectmen, do we want to look at a date that works now? And I was looking and saying the 22nd is the Thursday after our meeting, or the 27th is the next Tuesday after. When's the, the next scheduled selectmen's meeting? 
Is right. it Monday? Monday. Right. Two weeks. Next week's a holiday. Yeah. So the next selectman's meeting would be the 19th. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Um, well, if we're going to have our meeting on the 20th, do you want to do it that same week, the 22nd? Uh, I'm not good on Thursdays, John. So oh, okay. No, that's fine. That's so if now. we uh, go to the 27th, the, the, the meeting on the 9th, was it the 9th? No. So we have our meeting the 20th. So they're going to meet on the 19th. 19th. We meet on the 19th. Go to the 27th? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we meet the 20th, and then we'll meet again just for the, with the selectmen on the 27th. Oh, we're going to meet with jointly at on the 19th at their meeting. Well, what about our meeting? Our meeting will push to the 27th. So flip ours out three weeks? Yeah. Well, I don't guarantee that we can have a joint session on the 19th. I have no idea what's on our agenda already. Where we're missing a week, there may be a, I think that's going to be a full agenda for us already. I, I think that the 19th is filled up almost positive. So we the 20th? Okay. So what 20th? Chance? Tentatively, well, yeah, we guess it. Right. 20th, we know yeah. the 19th is full, so whatever. Okay. I, so I, I, saw some, I saw some items, and I believe the 19th is going to be completely filled up. Yeah. So the next night, Tuesday, the 20th, I'll talk to Debbie. I'll take care. I'll talk to Debbie Egan and so that I'll go through Mary Beth to okay. to. She'll let us know. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, fine. With you guys. Yeah. All right. So potentially the, the 20th for a joint session, providing you can happen. Okay. We'll have a meeting anyway. It's not a joint meeting with a segment. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so do you have any item agendas? Yes, I do. Uh, next next meeting, I'd like to uh, bring it up. The town common, the cemetery, Brad Street's farm, and the landing. The water be turned off and blown out with the air compressor. Maybe okay. Do I have a second on that? Fine. Oh, Very you good. Good. Thank you. Second. Yeah. It's already been done, so we so don't, need, don't need to be on the agenda. Hmm? It's already been done, so it doesn't need to be on the agenda at all. That would be up to the board, but oh. the seasonals, we're doing that now. Fine. Okay. okay. Anything else, still? No, I don't think so. Um, John? The flushing schedule? <coughs> Talk about that. But when that says, I can marry Beth about that. Will we get another round in before the end of the year? No, we put on the agenda in this. Who actually keeps the meetings, uh, minutes of the meetings here? And publish, like, I know all the other boards in town has somebody that does that, but. Mm -hmm. Is it Mary Beth? Or another person that's supposed to be? Oh, oh Eddie does two minutes for Mary Beth. She watches the video yes, and then she exactly. calls out the important wow. information from that. Mm -hmm. So the meeting that you have together will be videoed as well. I guess that's how we'll get the message. That's always your job question. or is it somebody else's job? If there was somebody else here, well, employee-wise. Normally it would be the administrative well, assistant. Well, okay, that's what I'm trying to get at. So okay. I could have another town administrative assistant who does minutes for another board. And right. Very, very confident, confident one. I'm very right. confident. So she does a great job. Okay, um, it's not. It's not me. I don't meeting meeting week to week. Right. It's very difficult for yeah. her to get that done. No, I was just wondering who. I have no idea what I just want to know. I just want on the agenda because I want to find out what's going on with that. If we're actually doing that again, because that's a to me it's a water loss. But okay, and is it required? And oh, okay. just I'd like to see the schedule. I have a bunch of questions, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's all. How about uh, we put a, on a general questions of uh, the ske what's scheduled on? Shouldn't that be in the uh, superintendent's uh, department operations report? Um, we can talk about that but on that, that section of the, of the agenda. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what. He's, he's asking, schedule. he wants to know what the question <coughs> schedule is, and he might have some other questions regarding the uh, operations here. So. Well, the flushing schedule would be, I think, it, you know, Number one, if it was on the, my only opinion, if it was on the agenda and we were talking about it, people watching at home, it would start to get the awareness out there that mm -hmm. we're going to be flushing, which of mm -hmm. course unfortunately means dirty water, but it would get it out there and then we could, you know, the schedule. Cause, yeah, cause have my it on issue the agenda is reverse 911. That's what yeah. I'm tired of having my wife yell at me. 
<laughs> Seriously, honest to God, uh, mm. it happens, and it, you know, like I'm. Uh, okay, so let's we'll put it. Looks fine. Fine. So uh, do we have a second for flushing <laughs> schedule on the agenda? Yeah, that'd be great. You have a second? Second. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, May I ask a quick question under old business? How's a new truck coming, Mary Beth? Have you heard? It's on order, and we should see it on in about 30 days. Ooh. Oh, nice. okay. And it has to go away for being fitted? It was going to be several months before we get the garage because it's got to go get all its belt and whiskers. I got a couple other items. Uh, bulk water rates. It's going through my old notes. We really haven't. We talked about charging for bulk water, so if we can put that on again. I thought we didn't need more that. No, we didn't. We tossed it around, that's as far as it went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you did. You had an interim. You so instructed me, the board voted and instructed me to use the current tiered structure. Yeah. But. Um, I, I, uh, we do have the large bill that I need to bill. Um, I need to present that for the board's approval before I can bill it. Oh. I'm, I'm preparing that right now. So, um, and then I would like the board to really be thinking about, um, you know, we need to come up with the bulk rate. Yeah, you know, we the, use the TED structure, but the, that's kind of stiff in another town if we. For example, we, when we purchased Life water is. from um, Georgetown years ago, <coughs> you paid ten thousand uh, dollars and you got not not a lot of water. You only got eleven thousand gallons of water from Georgetown wow. for ten grand. So it's just cheap for market It's it's you know <laughs> talk uh -huh. about the different bulk rates about you know having putting a hybrid on here so and advertising they have like the tanker trucks come and fill up you know we can generate uh, it's cash and carry they would have to pay for the water right here they go off and fill up people's swimming pools that yes. kind of thing mm -hmm. great idea yeah okay if we can get away with it bulk water rates decision mm. you have a motion make a motion second all in favor? Aye. Okay. That's all you Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to ask about the chain of custody on the, on the laptop. Yeah, oh, yeah. So we're really right. discussing it. Oh, okay. So, chain of custody for the laptop computer. I don't know what that's all about, so. Meaning it was here, the police were here, they saw it get left. Yeah. And then where to go? Who had their hands on it? Uh -huh. And then it showed up again. Yeah. So the police didn't they close out the investigation? Because the recover the item was recovered. Okay. But uh, Karen Summit brought up a significant problem with respect to the virus that was found on the computer. Huh. Subsequent to its leaving the water department. So, so what is a chain of custody going to do with us? I don't know. It's going to tell us where it was, who had it. Okay. And we can then ask them, what were you doing? And okay. how'd you get a virus? All right. So chain of custody on laptop computer. And I think we can give that to Karen Summit if we can, if we can get that. I, mean, yeah. I don't know how to get it. But right. Because it was, it's a town piece of equipment, right? Yeah. So yes. it, it is. It is our right to know what happened to it and where is it and what happened to it at all times. Mm -hmm. And it, and if Karen thinks it had a virus, we yeah. Well, no it, thanks. It was a virus. It was a virus on it. Yes. So yeah, there needs to be definitely a, a chain virus. of custody of where things were and how they were locked up. I mean, I have to keep track of my laptop from Triton mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every day. And where is it? And right now it's locked in my classroom. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, we have the information here. You cut me off when I, I started to read it. I already read that, so I, I, I well, the board's been aware of it. Thank you. The public you. is looking for is this information. Yeah. We'd like to hear it. Uh, We'd like to hear it. Yes, sir. I can either read it or I'll put it on for the next meeting. Put it on for the next meeting. So that's going to be on the chain of custody? Yes, we yeah. do. All right. COC. You have a motion for that? You have a motion to uh, ask for the chain of custody. Okay. Not okay. Second? Second. Oh, all in favor? The next meeting, October something. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Goes on. One Motion seven. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.